from a four young lads experiencing this most amazing dream that hundreds and thousands of people would love to be in our shoes and we're just so lucky and more so that we're so lucky that it's actually taken off because we've all been in bands before that that mm. weren't going anywhere and that you're in the complete other end of the scale of things and you don't have any money around you, you don't have any publicity, nothing. And we're thankful every day for mm. what we're doing. We put ourselves together. We were mates. We met on the audition circuit. We liked each other, we kept in contact. We decided that we were sick and tired of being messed around by two-bit managers, maybe, no offence or anything, but they probably had good intentions at heart, but they just couldn't do or take us where we wanted to go. Yeah. We, we were so passionate about it that we decided we wanted to be real. So yeah. I moved down to London and they were three piece at one. At one time I was living with Lee and I knew Duncan as well from the audition circuit. The only person I had to meet was this fella here, Anthony. And as soon as we met, we gelled. And that was it, Blue was formed. Then we met our manager who was having talks with Innocent at the time. We yeah. went in, did a cappella of Too Close. Boom, we got signed. Next, Next thing you know, we got All Rise, Too Close. close. If you come oh, back in my life. Album. Album. I think the advantages of being in a band is that when you're travelling, because you do travel a lot, yeah. you're not on your own. You know, you've got somebody else to bounce Back off. Back up. Do you know what I mean? And if I was feeling down, who have I got to speak to? I've got to pick the phone up and probably speak to my best mate. But instead of doing that, I can just turn around and say, Anthony, look, I've got this problem. Mm. Help me sort it off. Go okay. dunk. Rare, rare, I can go Lee. What yeah. do you think of this? Then we get back on with it. We were friends before, you see, so we knew each other's personalities, and because we've all got different personalities, mm. we all come together and it's, it's great. So we've got that respect thing there first. Like we've broke the ice already, we know what we want to do, we all understand each other's ambitions and dreams, and we're all passionate about it. We was in Manchester, the size hometown, this summer, yeah, and we got chased down weird. the road. You know, like the Beatles in Hard Day's Night when they're being chased down the road by fans. That was weird. And I was thinking to myself, last year, when we, like a year and a half ago, we got the band together, we were doing odd jobs, I was signing on, you know, I was doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, I can't believe this is happening so fast. It is weird what's yeah, going on in our I mean, lives right now, you know what I mean? It's crazy. <sighs> Everything, when you see all these girls on stage and they're, they're like that, and we think, you, yeah. you wouldn't even be looking at us. If yeah, exactly. We, we weren't in this group and we weren't blue. But it's then, it's like, that's what goes with the job. It's, um, it's mostly girls. However, you know, they say the same old things. They say the stuff like, you guys are great, we love your songs. You know, you're doing something that's different out in there in the market, unlike other bands that are around. And it's, you know, they feel that it's something that they can relate to more. Something's a bit cooler. You know, they feel that they can talk about it at school and you don't have to feel so shy about saying you like a band these days. Mm. My first job was working in a, um sandwich shop but I was eight years old and I used to go work on a Saturday because all my mates would have like a bit of money but then I'd have more money than them but for the first sort of couple, couple of months I was working there they used to pay me in food because I was too young so I'd like eat so much and I think that's where I got my appetite from and I got really fat as well but it don't matter because I was young puppy fat innit still got it now <laughs> first job porter for a hotel first job acting First job was breaking boxes in a fruit and veg shop. Worst job working in <laughs> what man? The worst job know. was working in a in, in a giant fridge stacking milk at yeah. minus eight degrees. And, it, and, it, and you can't what? you can't break the boxes because you're too job? light. And it, and My worst job on. Um, would be telly sales. <laughs> Hated it. Oh, My worst bad. job was probably telly sales. Hated that as well. <sighs> Sat on a phone with a list and you've got to go down. <laughs> yeah, and like and pages. You just, Hello, this is. Da -da 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 and they're like, I don't care. I was scouted by a few clubs when I was younger and all that. It's just like being in a, in a band, really. You get false promises and this, that and the other. But unfortunately for me, um, I got injured, hurt my ankles, and football is no longer an issue. We thought of the name Blue basically because we didn't want to categorise ourselves. We didn't want the name Screen Boy Band and blue just means us four guys and we have a blue sound.
We are a boy band. I mean, we're four guys in a band, so technically speaking, we're a boy band. We just don't want to be labelled as a typical boy band, singing, dancing, jumping about, not being real, because they get told what to say and told what to do, but we're not like that, so we're a boy band, yeah, but we don't have everything that goes with a normal boy band. Yeah. We like to think that we're in a cooler place, and the music that we do is, we like to think it's got a lot more quality to it. We've spoken to a lot of other like boy groups. Some of the music that they do, it's not that they what the sort of music they want to do. No. They're using yeah. it as a stepping stone yeah. to do what they want to do. But fortunately for us, we all have the influences of Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, Boys to Men, um, Teddy nice. Pendergrass. We've got all all of us like George Michael. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of soul, R and B and like basically we listen to vocalists. That's why, fortunately, we're proud, of, we're proud of what we're doing. So I've been going out to this club in uh, the West End for, for years now, and as soon as we got this deal and No Rise was released, I had this guy come up to me, I think it was about two months ago, and he said hello, and I went, yeah, you're right, mate. And he went, whoa, I thought you was American. Nah, mate, it's coming from UK sound. Obviously, people compare us to a group like another level, because that like over here Definitely. in England, they were the first band, well, one of the first bands apart from Damage, that was going down the R and B route. You know, they got it right. They had the image, they had the sound, and Look. they and they were doing well. Do you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden they split. That left a gap, and hopefully we filled it just right. The story behind All Rise is actually funny, because when we was over Weird. in Norway, it was the last song, we went over to Norway to record two songs. We ended up going over there for five days and we came back with five tracks. All Rise was the last one we recorded and it was to a totally different backing track. And it was hard hitting and it was like, what's, what is it? regimental, wasn't it? Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> it was like, was like that sort of thing. This? And we were like, what is this song? It's awful. And the words and the, 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 words, words, the lyrics like, were good and the, the yeah. tune, but the backing track just, the backing track was weird, and then so we was gonna go with our third single as our first single, and that was decided. Then this mix came back and got a phone call saying, you "Guys, come in, you gotta listen to All Rise." Like, what? We went in. <laughs> it was like, "This ain't All Rise." Tune, no. Then listen to it again and again. And then, but for, it's harder for us as well because we we're in the songs, we recorded the songs, and we're too close to the songs, <coughs> and it's really hard to take a step back and and think right. Which one is it going to be? Yeah. But fortunately for us, All Rise worked. All Rise helped us. It gave us that stability of, OK, this is it, we're about now, this is blue. All Rise stuck around for five weeks in the top ten, which nowadays is very, very rare. And I think when Two Clothes come out, everyone's like, whoa, these guys can actually sing. It's an amazing R&B track, which um, Nick's done. Yeah. It only got to number 12 over in England in 97, was it? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's good. We'd done that song because it was like our first sort of auditioning, if you could say, yes. piece for the record company. We've done an acapella of it when we sort of, like, after we got signed a couple of months down the line and we started the recording. We just went in there and done it and it came out well. And then we didn't even think about it being a single. Mm. And we didn't even think about how different can we make it either. You know, we wanted to keep it as close to the original as possible. You know, because it's a great song. We don't want to ruin a great song. Yeah, it went number one. The reason why we chose "If You Come Back" is ballad. Um, it's a great song. Um, it's got a Motown feel, and we decided that the three singles that we've released, "All Rise," "Too Close," and "If You Come Back." gives the audience an idea of what the album's about. It's got your soul, it's got your R&B, and it's got your Motown feel going through it. Yeah. I think if we were to release another song like All Rise, it, would, it wouldn't have given them the, the, the rhythm, the balance. Yeah, exactly. Of what the album's about. We got the finished songs back, and we listened to them all, and we'd said, you know, what ones would you like to be a single? And it's one of those situations where you just don't know, and you listen to them, and. You choose one and then you think, 
no, 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 that would be great as a second single or that would be great as a third single. And you go with that one and then your whole plan changes again. I think we've been very lucky because uh, our album, we've got 12 great songs on there, which all are potential singles. Mm. When you're singing live, one you're chance. feeding off an you're feeding off an audience. Yeah, and you've got so one it gives you more that. incentive. But when you're just standing there, you've got to get that energy, that that um, charisma in your voice to come out what just comes naturally when you're on stage because your adrenaline is rushing. Do you know what I mean? That's why we try and create scenes when you when you're in a recording studio. You have to it's acting and lucky enough yeah, we've all done like, acting. So if I go in a recording studio, I can't just stand there and sing because it's not me. I like the lights off when I'm in there. I like it's mm. really dark and you close your eyes and you just get like this vortex and you travel and you, it's great. It's I, can't, I can't do that because I can't see the microphone. Do that. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I'm singing, I try and think about ex-girlfriends or or things in life what I'm upset about at the time. I mean, you listen to a track called Long Time. I, I still, I still, yeah. the amount of work that we put on that song, and it's my favourite song on the album. And it's like when, when you're singing, it goes for every single one of us. We, we've done it before where we've gone in the recording studio and just lit candles, and you're in the recording studio and it's all dark, but just candles. Oh, yeah. And it gets you in the motion of singing. It comes from within. It's not just you, you're in there 20 minutes and then you're out again. It's like you're in, in there for days. three hours <laughs> in the one spot. Line. You remember? Do you remember? <laughs> you come out and you'd be like, you'd be just been in that whole the recording studio for four hours. If you come back and too close, we've worked with Ray Ruffin, offspring of um, Jimmy, Ruffin. Jimmy Ruffin. Jimmy Douglas for me is one of the greatest producers because he did the whole of older album. He's worked with Damage. He's worked with the All Saints. He's been there, he's done that, and he's bought the T-shirt. And um, he's the nice guy, recorded well with him. With Stargate, completely different, again, you know. Yeah, yeah. perfectionist, yeah. get it right. We're still learning, but we're still eager to learn as well. So that's what we're, we're, we're focusing on more anyway. We've had a lot of input in our first album because yeah. the producers and songwriters that we've worked with respected us as singers and artists and was like, have you got any ideas? And we was like, well, yeah. We gave them a cross and they happened to work. You get such a buzz, man, mm. of just writing these songs and thinking, oh, that's a wicked tune, man. And we're going to be doing that after Christmas. We're going to back in the recording yeah. studio. Babyface, yeah, he's, I mean, that's one of the producers that I'd love to work with. I think we'd all love to yeah, work with him. Yeah, he's definitely. produced um, Michael Jackson, Boyz II Men. He did the Pink done. album everything, as well. Everything. You know, he's, he's moving with the times and he's just a great songwriter, a great singer as well. I mean, at the end of the day, you're six people away from the person you want to work with or you want to meet. You know, we're, we're, we're fortunate enough we're in a, in a situation or in a position to yeah, turn around and say, we would like to work with. When we did record it in England, it sort of for me, put a perspective on the song, because I've heard it so many times, but when I was actually, we were all at, actually acting it out as a group, singing a song, it sort of made us a bit more emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. It put us into, yeah. I mean, I could sing the song 50,000 times, and they'd be like, oh yeah, it's if you come back, but being filmed, and actually, you're on your own, because we was on our own for most of the video, singing your bit, it was a bit sort of emotional. It was the quickest shoot ever as well. Yeah. <laughs> Telling you, man. So as soon as it got it. dark, right, you can go home now, sweet. Because <laughs> <laughs> they got what they wanted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, great. they worked for what they wanted. It was like, this is what we want, we know exactly what we want and we're going to do it. No and that's what around. we wanted. We've never sung without a mic before and like to mime to it as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and the guy directed us with do your thing. So I just had all visions of what other videos I've seen <laughs> yeah. and after a couple of takes just thought oh forget it it's not even worth trying to be someone else it was great great it was funny it was funny and we got it. there was all oil all over the floor it was proper in like just industry man yeah. I mean if you look at all rise and look at us in the background you can see what's happening because we're just talking like that going yeah man this is good this isn't it it's good man it's good man <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was so real, it was so real, so real. It was real, man, it was cool. Because we didn't know what to do, man, and when we were sitting there, 
Like yeah. I say, we, so there's all different cameras, and sometimes you can see that I ain't looking at the camera, and I'm looking uh, looking around to see which camera I got. On. I don't, yeah, uh, and then you spot it in it. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> in, and, it's, and it's in the video, and, it, and a lot of people don't see that. They just see us singing all right, but every time it changes, we know what we were thinking at that time or mm. what we were speaking about. Yeah. That's what makes it special for us. We spent two days doing that dance routine because it had to change totally and we couldn't get it until that day, until that morning, until we was doing it and it was just tight. Like I said before, we're not a dance group and like I said, so I'm just said about the two days before, we totally changed the dance routine and we've been living with this song for about three months, four months yeah. performing it. So when we had to change it, we was like, nah, man, nah, it's good the way it is. <laughs> I didn't get any sleep for that too close video. I was naked. I mean, so like, we all get excited. We've got to shoot a good video, we've got to shoot a video, and we know it's a four o'clock start. So we're like, right, got to get to bed at nine o'clock. Mm. Doesn't work. Like In bed, kid tossing, at Christmas, turning, man. tossing, turning. It's like little kids going to the theme park the next day, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Or it's Christmas day and you can't sleep. Waiting for Father Christmas come down the, uh, the old chimney. Because we've done a lot of acting, it helps us with our personality and our own charisma. It's like, Bring yourself across. It's like, so I can go in a room, say, with a lot of people, and he can hold his own because he's, he's done the acting. Dunk can do it as well, Lee can do it as well. It's confidence like, as it's well. Confidence. Yeah. I always found it easier to play in front of a crowd than play in front of my mum or a girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? When I used to come along to football, I used to try and impress too much and mess up. But um, you, you, you learn from your mistakes and you move on. And I think, yeah, that has helped me, personally. When we did Party in the Park, that was the most, I think, highlight of our year. Over 100,000 people out there, and there's ours on stage. Doing that to all right, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> and it was just scary. like... Oh my God, what are we doing? And yeah, you, can't, you couldn't park, see you anybody. Park. Can you believe that? You mm. couldn't see, all you could just see was just heads. A sea of heads. A sea man. of heads going back. And you get up there and you push on stage and you go and <laughs> it just happens so quick. You come off and we're like, I want to go back on now. Oh my God, we just done part in the park. Can we go I didn't on? think about that. When I ran on stage, from the time I got on that stage and from the time I rang off, I was blank. Yeah, yeah. Blank. blank. Just went. Don't remember what just I was doing. I just remember like a robot. Not that. It was, wasn't it? being amazed and looking, having a big massive screen behind you and as you're singing, we was there looking at the screen going, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> we're entertainers and we like to entertain people. Yeah. And I just stand there and try and look pretty. Because I don't think we are. <laughs> <laughs> Pumping no wall painting. <laughs> we want loads of explosion. We want everything to just be mad on the arena tour. Everyone just pumping. I'll stage dive, man, I don't care. <laughs> Strict, you know what I mean? Straight. Stage dive on the five year old kids, man. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> in the front row, <laughs> man. They were like, they were part, I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> what, you all right there, mate? We'll stage show dive. you what, what we do. This okay. happens every time mm -hmm. we do a gig. Either a gig or TV, any time we're going to get on stage we'll anywhere. Explain the mics. We have microphones on our mics and they've each got a little number on them. And my mic is number one, his is number two. I'm number three. Three and four. four. So we do this thing where we put our hands in. One, one two, two, three, blue! Come on! One, two, three, blue! Come on! What we want is we want a blue changing room with blue towels, with blue, blue water yeah. in the showers. And if there's not blue soap, then it's, we're not, we're not it's over. <laughs> as long as we're, I mean, I think the only thing we really ask for is hot water. Yeah. Because when we're warming up, we've been asleep in a car for four hours. You get to a gig, you've got 15, 20 minutes to warm up. Yeah, yeah, wicked. Like, like, yeah. right now, so we've got a gig tonight. Hot water, steam, you know what I mean? It's, it helps you warm up. But that's not anything that we demand. We'll get it ourselves. Our pop career highlight would be our song being played in EastEnders and Coronation Street. We Which it was last week. This was last yeah, week. Two was close was in there, man. All Rise. <laughs> all Rise was played in Kevin's... Was it All Rise? All Rise. It was, was it All Rise in the Queen Vic. All Rise, All Rise. Phil, Phil having a it. fight and there's All Rise in the background. In a big Wicked. English soap. Also, there was a um, big highlight for us. Um, it was probably 
as I said earlier on, part in the park. Part in the park. Yeah, yeah, cool. 130,000 people, yeah. British people. Biggest man. crowd we've played to. Big that up. was great. Yeah. I mean, I'm 22, you know, and I'm getting a chance to see the world. Been to America, going to Australia. It's fantastic. Oh, what an opportunity. It's you a know. job that takes you there as well. It takes it's a job. years to save up, to go, I'm going to go backpacking around Australia. I've saved seven years. <laughs> we're going, yeah, you're going to do that show, you're going to do this show, and you're going to get free flight. And we're like, wicked. Yeah, it's gone fast. Yeah. So fast. It, you know, people say it's a roller coaster, right? It so is. And literally, from the moment we got signed to, to, to sitting here now, I mean, I look back and I think, God, we've been here, we've been there, we've done this, we've done that. Do you know the weirdest thing is? Is that we can look back. Just go like Stories to say. Stories that we've got, it's, it's, it's quite amazing. Yeah. And I think we're still eager to get some more. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but then again, I always say, if it ended tomorrow, we had fun. We've had fun, We've you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. You're on a one for the money and a free ride. It's two for the lie that you didn't hide. All rise, all rise, all rise, all rise. Three for the cause you've been making. It's four for the times you've been faking. All rise, all rise. I rest my case. Buckle. Three. Four. I am not invincible. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. I am not immune to pain. Oh. Um, teddy bear, because my hairy chest. <laughs> I'm, I'm more like a, uh, a snake. I'll be a lion. Probably a goldfish, innit? <laughs> Forget everything. <laughs> Hulk Hogan, man. George Michael. <laughs> he Mike was, Tyson. Hogan was mine when I was a kid. We used to be into WWF wrestling and he was just like... Nelson Mandela. I do woman, my older woman. Um, mm. Angelina <laughs> Jolie. Natalie Brulia. Angelina Jolie. Britney Spears. Jessica Simpson. Beyonce. Cameron Diaz. Julie Roberts. Or Little Kim. I don't know until I meet my future wife, I won't know. Too close, mate. Does my ring ringtones. The usual ring ring. Some Caribbean ringtone. I've always got mine on vibrate, man. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> Hi, we're, we're blue. blue. This is our new single, If You Come Back. back. Hi, we're blue, and this, this is too close. Hi, we're blue, hope you've had a good year. This is our first single. All right. Hi, we're blue, this is our new single. Oh, yes, it is. Hi, we're blue. Hope you have a great Christmas. Happy Christmas. Hi, we're blue. All, All the, the best, best for 2002. 2002. Peace.